Greetings. Uh, we, we're here, Lim and yeah. Mike. Uh, we're here today to talk about some amazing new products. And uh, I think most of you know Lim now um, for some of his views. His uh, mission <laughs> has always been to change the world. Otherwise, it's not really worth doing. Yeah. So, uh, Lim, what we've what we've got here um, is EZIO's um, first wireless controllers, but we are going to change the world. We hope and, so. Yeah, and I know you are always a bit more conservative than me. But so let me ask you a question. Um, why? What's the advantage of just per se going wireless? Why would why would people do that? In, especially in uh, in the Western world where labor is very expensive. Because you could save a lot in labor costs in running cables to the equipments. Look at the IT world. They used to run thousands of hundreds and thousands of cables below your floor. Almost every desk has three network cables. Today, they stop running that because everybody is using Wi-Fi. And it's probably safe to bet. I mean, I know that in your home, if uh, if your kids or your wife can't get internet, you're the one who has to fix it, right? Yes, because it's part of life. Yeah. Wi-Fi become pervasive to the point that it's part of business infrastructure. Yeah. And, and same in an office environment as well. If if someone's in a corner of a room and they don't get a good signal, IT will fix it pretty damn quick. Yeah, because the guy can't work, can't make money for the company. Yeah. <laughs> so bringing it back a little bit closer to the industry we're in, certainly we are doing a lot of things in IoT and education and things like that, but for now we'll just stick with the FW, or the F range, should we say, the FW range. Um, I can see a product here, Lim. You've got some antennas here. It looks like they're standard connectors. You've got, oh, a VAV controller as well. Yeah. So a VAV controller with two Ethernet ports and Wi-Fi, and a backnet client. So, what's the thinking here with the, you know, with these antennas and a 14 point and 8 point? Okay, this uh, FW is our starting point on to the wireless uh, market. Uh, we start looking at say, hey, it's almost time for us to produce a wireless product, and of all the wireless technology that we have in our industry. Again, the most pervasive is Wi-Fi, mm. which is available in the IT industry for the last 20 years. But why not use Zigbee? How the thing is that it's the cost and the volume and the backward compatibility and the speed. Look okay. at it this way. Wi-Fi started 20 years ago with AO2.11b. That's what I installed 20 years back in my home. Yeah. And up to today, it's still compatible. Yeah. Yeah. The other aspect is that security-wise, Wi-Fi has security has been evolving non-stop progressively to get more and more secure over time. Whenever someone hack it, they could come up something better, yeah. and it's adopt across every product and not optionally decide whether you want or don't want it. Well, no, I do. I and all my friends and family all do internet banking over the internet and lots of large transactions over Wi-Fi. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean it's all changed and, and, and one thing you did mention to me earlier is that part of your mission was not to just do the same that the controls industry always does. You've said rather than add Wi-Fi to a controller, add Wi-Fi or wireless to a controller and of course then the price goes up, right? Oh, and then we also want a share of the labor savings as well, <laughs> which is a bit unfair really. So if we're going to go wireless, why don't we let people win, let people save money? So you, what you did is you took a router and made it into a controller, right? Yes, a because... a Sedona engine, an open source. You tell me a bit about that. Let's put it this way. How many routers are manufactured each year? Mm. It's in terms of maybe a million to oh, two million. I'd say, hundred, I would say hundreds ten, of millions. Yeah, ten, ten million. million. Many. Okay. So how many controllers do we manufacture each year? <laughs> in the industry? <laughs> yes. We would be lucky if we did a million, I would think, yes. in the whole and world. And out of that million, how many wireless controllers will we be doing? I would say maybe... 20,000. So, those wireless chips like ZB are what? How many chips are manufactured each year? Not many. Not much. Yeah. So, manufacturing is a game of volume. So, the fiscal price has no reality to the material, but is proportional or inversely proportional to the how much you manufacture. Right. And you've, 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 you've been very good with your team, your R&D team of tapping into the supply chain, being close to the big suppliers, especially in China, where yes. a lot of the chips are, are, are produced. Um, so last year we look at it and we're looking at there's a trend of standardization in the IT world. In fact, if you look today, most of the routers you get, even the smallest router, like a portable router, which is about 30 to $40 yes, from is. Best Buy, eBay, Amazon. And what is inside there? 
it it has a 500 to 600 megahertz processor. Yeah. It has Wi-Fi capability to support all the standard like B, G, and N up to 150 to 300 megabits per second. It has memory. It has flash. It has multiple Ethernet ports, something like up to five Ethernet port. It has serial. It has USB. So. Wouldn't that be a perfect chip for a controller? Well, it really is. And uh, if you look at the rooftop controller here, I mean, it's not just rooftop. All of these are freely programmable. They, we will be developing apps, especially for the VAV. Um, but what I like about this from, a, from an engineer's point of view is I can mix wire and wireless. So cool. the problem with wireless has always been, what do you happen when you go through walls, you know, and things like that. So you've got it so we can have a daisy chain wire like RS-45 or a bit of both, especially when we go through a concrete wall. So the FW series was designed with a pre every product in our series has a characteristic. Mm. So the FW series characteristic is that it must be Wi-Fi, it must support B, G, and N standard yeah. Yeah. with a minimum up to 150 megabits per second. Yeah. It must have two Ethernet ports. It must have a serial port that has a bagnet MSDB client. On the IP side, the Wi-Fi side, or the Ethernet side, it should have a backnet IP yeah. as a server as a side. Server, yeah. uh -huh. So what you're saying is, especially in the instance of a rooftop unit, most rooftop units have probably got a drive inside them to control the fan. So most times that's going to be backnet MSTP. So we can bring that in through here Yes. and have a backnet over IP, backnet over IP, over Wi-Fi. People seem to think it's not the same thing. Wi-Fi is the carrier, it is IP. The BACnet would be the protocol. The tools would be CPT um, and SOX, Sedona, to do live engineering inside a VAV and inside a rooftop unit. Now, in the case of the VAVs, we're talking about having a wireless mesh above the ceiling. Now, of course, if it's a metal ceiling, and I believe about 10% of ceilings in offices are metal, then obviously we'd go in through the side, we'd go in through one of yes. the controllers. But if, let's say it was not a metal ceiling, when you're doing the air balancing, you could use a cell phone, it could be the air balancing guy himself, it could go into the dashboard that's in there, right? Okay, every FW controllers we build a user interface, a dashboard user interface that you see in the FG. And they're also peer, they can be peer-to-peer, -peer, just and like our current controller, True, because that's important. Too. The FG peer-to-peer -peer protocol will be supported by every FW protocol so that it can share data with a FG or a FW. Yeah. On top of that, the Wi-Fi is both a client and an access point, which allow us to configure as a repeater. So that means that each controller is your Wi-Fi repeater, which extends the range of your Wi-Fi. Which typically Wi-Fi is like 30 meters, 100 feet, isn't it, usually? More than that. Probably That's a cable. That. No, but I mean, I no, I think, yeah, okay. But <laughs> if, even if you were to say that, given that each one is a repeater, you've still got plenty of space. If it's greater, that's great. You yeah. Know? And one of the issue with wireless technology in our industry always been that people, unlike a cable, you can see the physical cable reaching that point. Mm. Wi-Fi, do you get a signal at that corner? Yeah. And most of it is that you will never know until you install and you find that you couldn't get a signal. Yeah. Then you have trouble. So what, what I know what we, we were talking about was, let's say one of the dashboards has all of the other VAVs linked to it through the peer-to-peer. Through a number of buttons on the dashboard, we're going to be able to select minimum or maximum so True. they can drive all the, the dampers open and blast the air through and balance them or do the minimum or do auto. Yes, yeah. because that's just an application side. Yeah. Because our peer-to-peer -peer is a global sharing. Yeah. So yeah. every controller could see that register, that information to open, to close or to be at which position. Now, one other thing I'm sure the listeners would be very interested in is the tools. One thing I find in our industry is we, we've gone crazy on licensing and different tools. It's almost like we love to make life hard for ourselves. So <laughs> what's your philosophy on that? I mean, what tools are we using to program everything that EasyIO does? Okay, EasyIO have a pretty lazy team of programmers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't like to write a lot of programs. So we created one tool for all our products called CPT. The philosophy of CPT has always been two major aspects. One is it's license free. So license free? Are you mad? That's how we you go can't about. Can't possibly do that. <laughs> is Easy Hour working for nothing? <laughs> yes, it's license free. It's expiry free. And what was the other thing? Something to do with Windows, okay. I believe. We make it independent on Windows 
software. That means that it do not depend on which version of Windows. It yep. do not depend on certain libraries that Windows have mm. on certain version. Mm. That means that at any time you can take the CPV software and just run on anything from XP to the next greatest Windows mm. that's coming around the corner. Today is 10, tomorrow could be 11, five years down the road could be 15, yeah, and yeah. it should still run. It should still just run. Well, that's a, a pretty damn amazing. I mean, we could talk all day, but what we wanted to do is just give people a, a quick idea of what we're doing. Um, there is an FW8 without VAV, so you can see the two nipples there for the pressure pickup. Um, there'll be one with and without, same form factor, um, just one won't be populated. Now, on price limb, you've also managed to do this at a pretty crazy price as well. True. Earlier we mentioned that we design a, the control base on a router. Router today, like you take a look at it, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Mm. So, what we are doing is that we're not taking a control, expand the hardware, increasing the cost. Mm. We take a con router, taking its processor, its mm. memory, and then just add I.O. to it. And we created a controller by putting in Sedona, which is open source. Most of these routers do run Linux as it's open source too. So I know a lot of viewers are going to be thinking, but we thought Sedona was dead. It's not in Niagara 4. So what? It's open source. The genie is out of the bottle. Yeah. Everyone has a source code for Sedona. People can then create, expand, evolve Sedona. So, so once you've got do that, you do the live engineering, you do all your backups, you've got BACnet, you've got TCOM. You've got yeah. web services, you've got all kinds of different ways, and it's all HTML5 friendly. There's no plugins in this, right? No Java. No Java. Yeah. Everything is standard HTML5. So, what we can call it an open controller. So, we're talking about a VAV controller under $200, right? True. Yeah, which, which with live programming and no communication wires. We sure, you still need power, but you need power to drive the valve anyway. What about floating control, though? About 9% of VAV boxes in the US are floating control. What okay, are we doing about that? We've got four AOs, right? Okay, the FW8 has eight IO points, four yeah. UI, four AOs, no DOs. Yeah. So what we're coming out is that a DIN real mount converter from one AO to two DO. Yeah. So yeah. every single AO we can expand to two digital output mm. and is designed to able to handle like at different voltage, different relays, turn on or off. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. On top of that, that DIN real mount relay module will have override switch, mm. which can manually override, open or close mm. any of the relays. So this is going to be ideal for fan coil, induction units, VAV, um, small point counts, but the price point is great. So even the VAV one is under 200. Um, and I think we're really onto a winner with that one. I really think that it's going to change the game, especially when an air balance person can use his cell phone to balance a floor and not even need to remove a ceiling tile. Yeah. That's fantastic, right? Well, because every one of these is an access point, Wi Fi access point by itself. So you can walk to a controller, pull out your handphone, talk to that, use the yeah. Wi Fi to connect to the controller, and then pull out the web page. Yeah. And then from there, you get your dashboard, log in, get your dashboard use that to control, look at the status, look at the performance, and up to you. You want to change the set point, override it, mm. do air balancing. That's Your amazing. Choice. And while we're on the price, I believe that also the rooftop unit freely programmable 14 point is also under $200, which is a first. I think, um, you know, I don't, let, I don't want people to think that we're giving things away. We're not. We want to produce the best quality products with the best features, but we would like to give it at a good, valuable, a good value price. We want to sell lots of them, not just make a killing on one, right? Yes. In fact, the whole idea of choosing component that is massly produced, mm. it's the same story like you go to maybe Best Buy to buy a sure. one component, a resistor, that yeah. costs you a buck. Yeah. But if you order a bulk of a thousand piece, the whole volume of one thousand piece still costs you one dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so it's about where are you buying? Are you buying bulk? Is the component produced in large volume? Yeah. Massively used by everything. Look at Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Your laptop uses Wi-Fi. Your handphone uses Wi-Fi. Everything. Your TV, smart TV uses Wi-Fi. Correct. So Lim, just uh, while we're on this series of videos, um, we are doing e-learning videos at the moment. 
We're also going to be doing talking about um, IoT devices that right. you're working on. We won't go through the details now, but we've got a full IoT range. Um, and we've also got um, another controller coming out in May 2017, not long from now, which is called our FS. And um, I believe that's going to be a quad core 1.2 gig, right? It's not the W range, but it it is okay. a, one of the new products, right? The FS is the next product line that supersedes the FG family line. Mm. FG will still be carried on, mm. but we want something that is b way beyond the typical FG. S was denoted as a server class. So FS is a server class controller. Why? We want to run a full software. For example, things like we get a quad core 1.2 gig processor on the FS. We got 512 meg of RAM. We got 8 gig of flash inside it. So with that kind of memory footprint, it's equivalent to maybe 15 years ago a server. And, and I understand the graphics, the HTML graphics can fully populate in two seconds. True. With the quad core, what we did was that we dedicate one call for the operating system, mm. one call for Sedona, one for the web server, one for the SQL database. Mm. That means that either one have is being loaded, it don't penalize the other side of the right, system. Right. But I don't see why you need a controller like that when you've got a Jace. You could use a Jace 8000. True. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but for us, we are wanting to do beyond. We want to do mm. a lot of stuff right at the field device, right mm. at the edge. So like not just the plant control, it's edge as well. Yes. Yeah, okay. And, and we also want to do things like security, open VPN, both mm. server and client. Down the road, because we're doing a full Linux operating system, we could implement services like single sign-on LDAP or even other SNMP for data centers. And, and I guess you'd be charging a license for every one of those, will you? Who knows? <laughs> but generally you don't, do you? Generally, we don't. Generally, if it's open source, you pass that on to the we, user. We pass it on to the user because we have a sorry, we have a philosophy that we are a hardware manufacturer. Right. So, so we don't make any money out of the tools then? We all don't. the licenses and stuff? It's just an enabler. The software is to enable you to use the hardware more effectively. See, I think you're going to upset a lot of people then. Or you're going to make a lot of people very happy. I'm not sure which one. We see. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Lim. That's great. Great Thank job, you. buddy. Okay, great.